Hello, I'm Johannes Flodaus. I've been a professional artist for over 25 years and I've done about 3,000 paintings. And I'd like to welcome you to my world of art so that you can enjoy the life that I've had creating paintings and interpreting the field and experiencing the beauty of art. And one of the common questions that I always get is students want me to read out what colors I use for different landscape objects such as mountains, trees, clouds, grass, etc. While that might work for that one day, I can give them three or four different colors, but what happens when the season changes or what happens when there's more moisture in the air? Obviously that mountain's going to change color, those trees are going to change colors, so these color formulas or recipes will not work. They're not effective and you'd have to memorize too many color combinations. So how about we simplify it and I've come up with a three step matching system based on what is well known as the color wheel which consists of three primary colors yellow, blue and red but I've simplified it for you to remember these because I associate that with a clock. So let's, do, let's see if this system actually works where I don't have to use black and I don't have to buy all kinds of brands of paint in different colors to get to the same variations of colors that we have here. So for that I'll just use some of these swatches. We'll take white first. It's always better to grab the lightest color first. And let's match that one. So I first have to locate that on the clock. I would say that is a red-orange, which means that we are at 9 o'clock. How light it is, we already saw that. It's a little bit darker, which means I'm going to have to use the violet to get to that. And that will do the job. So let's take our yellow and our red to get to the red-orange. There we go. So I got my hue. How dark and how light it is, that's where I take my violet. Get darker, get more red. Oh, I think I'm pretty close. Let's try that out. Bingo. As you can see, this would probably be a, an Indian red that you can buy in a store. But you don't need to buy that. You just have to buy three colors, white, and you can mix them all. Take a clean brush. That's what the solvent is for. It's just for cleaning out all the stuff between your bristles. So double loading the brush would be you take one side like that, grab the other side like that, and if you want you can even add one more side. This would be referred to as triple loading the brush. Now watch this, it's like magic. Look at all the color variances and I didn't even reload my brush a second time. Now I will, so now I can add on to that. I continue double loading or triple loading my brush. You see how all the colors are dancing there? Very quickly I can produce a contour of a tree. A very popular subject is seascapes and one of the easiest ones because when you learn the anatomy of a wave you can apply that to all seascapes. So let's learn how to do that today. What always becomes an attraction is something called the eye of the wave. So we use viridian green and white for that. We put that nice little glow in there.
And we have to think about the wave is crashing and there's foam over here. So that foam is going to pick up some shadow. So it's not getting direct sunlight. So we use broad brush strokes, trying to use as much as I can the colors of the sky. See, by pushing on the brush hard, I get those beautiful variances of color, which is exactly what I want. Hey, we already have a crashing wave. Oops. When you have things like that, when you have little unhappy brush strokes, you get lucky brush strokes, sometimes you don't. That's where your wipes come in, kitchen wipes. And actually, I'm glad that happened so you can all see that you don't have to panic when things don't work the, exactly the way you want them with every brush stroke. And just wipe it off. That's wonderful. So there's no reason to fear this pigment. That way you can loosen up, and do whatever you want, not worry about making mistakes because you can always go back and fix it. Here's our drag and pull technique. Put your brush like this and from 9 to 3 o'clock you pull. That's much better than trying to tap them in that you might have seen before. There's a tendency that a lot of artists tend to tap in evergreen trees. This is a better technique because it creates a lot of uneven negative spaces in there. <laughs> 